In this video, I will explain the basics of ordinal data models. Ordinal data is one level of measurement. So there are four levels of measurement typically introduced in research methods books, such as singleton straits. On the most primitive levels, the data are nominal, which means that are, we have numbers. The numbers refer to different categories, so its value is different, but we can't really compare the numbers. So Finland is one, Sweden is two, Norway is three. We can't say that Finland plus Sweden is Norway. We can't even say that Sweden is more than Finland or Norway is more than Sweden. These are just numbers that are labels from some abstract categories. When we add uh, a more, when we have more uh, refined variable, we add order. So that's the first thing that we add. We can say after adding order, that one is less than two, two is less than three, and one is less than three. And, but we can't say that the difference between one and two is the same as the difference between one and three. For example, uh, we could have a rating scale, one is disagree, two is uh, not agree or disagree, and three is agree. We can't say that the difference between agree and not agree or disagree is the same as the difference between disagree and not agree or disagree. Also, we can have ranks in sports competitions. We can't say that the difference between first and second is the same as the difference between second and third. When we add a constant interval between categories, then we have interval measurement. And we can say that 2 minus 1 is the same as 3 minus 2. And an example would be a Fahrenheit or Celsius uh, temperature scale. So uh, the unit has uh, a meaning, so the difference between uh, 1 and 2 is the same as 2 and 3. But the difference between uh, interval scale and ratio scale is that there is no meaningful zero point. Meaningful zero point here means that we have a, a zero, which means an absence of a quantity. So uh, for example, length in meters, weight in kilograms is an absence, uh, is a radio scale because zero means that uh, the weight is uh, non-existent, zero meters, non-existent uh, length, and so on. And we can say that uh, two kilos is twice as much as one kilo. We can say that two Fahrenheit is twice as much as one Fahrenheit. Does it make sense? Regression analysis assumes interval measurement and also works with ratio measurement because all ratio measurement is also interval measurement. What if we have ordinal measurement? So we don't know an order, but we don't know what's the difference between the, two, between the categories or different uh, units that we order. There are tools that we apply for ordinal models are typical tools are ordered probability regression and ordered logistic regression. These are fairly straightforward ex extensions to the, uh, the binary case where the dependent variable is 1 and 0. Let's take a look at the dependent variable receiving three values 1, 2 and 3. One way to formulate the ordered model is to use the latent variable formulation which uh, I cover in, in the probit regression video. So we have a latent variable that is sum of these uh, different regression coefficients multiplied by the, uh, by the data plus an anomaly distributed error term with the variance of 1. Note that there is no intercept here, so an intercept is not estimated in, in these models. Then we have our two thresholds. If the latent variable y star is uh, smaller than the first threshold, then y receives value of 1. If the latent variable is between thresholds 1 and 2, then y receives value 2. And if the threshold is less than uh, more than 2, then y receives value of 3. Graphically, we can look at the probabilities here. So uh, let's say that the fitted value for one case is, is exactly 0. Then we draw a, a regression, draw the normal distribution here. And then uh, the uh, area here between threshold 2 and infinity is the probability of getting a 3. The area between threshold 1 and 2 is the probability of getting 2. And the threshold, uh, the, dif the area before threshold 1 is the probability of getting 1. Of course, where exactly we draw this distribution depends on the fitted value. So for a case uh, with a larger fitted value, we could have something like this. So uh, observing 2 would be more most probable alternative for this case, and observing 3 and 1 would be equally likely, but less likely than observing 2. So instead of, uh, so the idea is the same as in a, in a probit model, but instead of splitting the normal distribution at, at zero, we split it at different thresholds that we estimate from the data. Another way of looking at this uh, issue is uh, the, the link function formulation. So we can uh, look at the link function and uh, the idea is that we estimate two logistic curves or two probit curves that only differ in their intercept. The idea is that if uh, 
the curve goes here. The first curve uh, tells what is the probability of observing a value of at least one. Then the second curve tells us what is the effect of observing value that is at least two. So these curves differ only in their intercept. If the intercept is greater, then it means that the curve uh, moves to the uh, right and uh, then uh, the probability increases. So what's the probability of, of getting uh, one here? The probability of getting one is simply one minus the probability of getting more than one here. So this is the probability of getting more than one, then the probability of getting one is one minus that probability. The probability of getting two is the difference between uh, the probability of getting more than one and the probability of getting more than two. So that's the probability of getting two and then uh, the probability of getting three is this final curve here. So that's the probability of getting a value greater than, than two from the data. So uh, when you look at books about ordinal models, ordinal regression models, you quite often see this kind of uh, distributions that are or graphs that show the different probabilities, these red lines for the different response options. We can see here that when x has a small value, then all things being equal, the most probable answer is one or most probable uh, observation. When x uh, approaches zero, then uh, there are the Option the answer two is the most probable, and then uh, when we have a, a large value of x, then answer option three is the most probable. So the probability for these different uh, options uh, changes as a function of this this x value here. Okay, so what's the relationship between these uh, the link function formulation and the latent variable formulation? It turns out that there are the thresholds in this uh, latent variable formulation are the negative of the intercept. So if uh, a threshold is large, then that means that the intercept must be negative. So uh, the practical implication of this difference is that when you uh, interpret your regression results for ordered models from your statistical software, you have to understand whether the software presents you the intercepts or the thresholds when you calculate these curves to, to do the probabilities. Then uh, the model makes some assumptions. The assumption here, the important assumption is, is the parallel lines or proportional odds assumption, which means that uh, the linear prediction for all these observations is the same. So uh, the factors that explain the difference between the first category and the second category are the same as the factors that explain the difference between the second category and the third category. So if, if one variable has twice the effect of another variable, when we differentiate between the first and second category, then it's assumed that the same two variables, one has twice the effect than the other when we differentiate between uh, the second and third option. Also the parallel lines assumption here uh, means that these, these lines here, these uh, curves are differ only in their interest. They differ on how much we shift them sideways and not in uh, how steep they go up. This is an assumption uh, that is empirically testable and whenever you use logistic or, or, or probit models and the ordered versions of these, you have to, uh, you should test this assumption because it's fairly easy to do with your statistical software. Let's take a look at an empirical example and how these models are interpreted. The example is a paper by Antonakis and colleagues and uh, they look at the question of whether uh, charisma can be taught and we are looking at our uh, rankings of leaders. So they are uh, did an intervention study and uh, they, they applied leadership training to people and then uh, they videoed those people before and after the training. And uh, then they had students or some people who were rating those videos and then they look at whether the ranking, uh, the expected rank of uh, a video was influenced by the training. So whether the ranks before and after the training were statistically significantly different and by how much. Here we can see that uh, the thresholds are here, so they should be reported. And uh, there's no intercept because uh, basically these thresholds are the same as uh, the intercepts would be for the individual logistic regression curves. So uh, we don't have any, any common intercept for these models. So these thresholds, if you multiply them by minus one, could be interpreted as intercepts for the regression models. So we don't normally interpret these uh, 
directly. Instead, uh, we look at uh, the, X, uh, the predictive probabilities. So this is, uh, they, they are looking at predictive probabilities based on the model and uh, the, the independent variable is charismatic leadership tactics CLT and they look at whether the use of these tactics that they were teaching uh, they are the subjects, whether they influence the rating and uh, when you have high charismatic leadership tactics then you are more, most likely to be rated uh, a very good leader or a very persuasive person and if you have low use of charismatic leadership tactic the most likely uh, uh, rating for you is going to be one, the weakest out of four. So this is an, a way of, of interpreting the results or presenting them in a journal paper. Again, uh, you do graphically the interpretation. Looking at these regression coefficients really doesn't tell us much because they are, they are logistic regression or probit regression coefficients. Interpreting them directly is hard. Interpreting the thresholds directly is hard. But if you plot the predictive probabilities for different kinds of cases, then you can look at, okay, what do the results actually tell us? Final question is, when should these models be applied? And uh, the common question is that if we have an agreement scale like this, strongly disagree one, strongly agree five, is this an interval scale or is this an ordinal scale? Normally, if you have just one variable, then uh, you would consider it as an ordinal. So single item from one to five, probably not, you can't assume that it is very strongly disagree, and disagree is the same as disagree and do not agree or disagree. So probably not. If you have multiple items, then maybe under certain scenarios. The problem with if you have multiple items from one to five scale is that if you want to take a mean out of those uh, items, then you must assume that they're ordinal because calculating a mean of, uh, you must assume that they're interval. You can't calculate the mean from ordinal data because uh, calculating the mean requires that the intervals are the same. When you go to more advanced modeling literature, you can see that there's a debate on whether this should be uh, modeled as ordinal or nominal, ordinal or interval when you have multiple measures in the latent variable literature. And there is uh, this really good paper by Remtula and colleagues that demonstrates that if you have uh, three or more items and the scaling is from one to five or more and the items are not extremely, uh, not extreme so that you only get fives and fours instead of these one, twos and threes, then in most cases assuming that this is uh, an interval scale doesn't make a difference. So a practical recommendation if you are a beginner, then if you have one item, it's better to treat that item as interval, as uh, ordinal scale. If you have two items or more, take a mean and then uh, treat it as an interval scale. Taking a mean and then treating it as an ordinal scale doesn't make any sense because you need to uh, assume interval scales to take the mean.